Mr. Welch, have you had a chance to uh, review uh, the city attorney uh, for the town of Portsmouth, uh, Attorney Sullivan, who was also um, a key member of the Cocoa Landfill Group? Have you reviewed his 15 September letter? I did letter? have an opportunity the other day to read his letter, yes. Okay. Uh, comments, please? Uh, I suggest seriously that this board invite him to be here to talk uh, and to expand on his letter. Um, the original letter from the Board of Selectmen uh, that they had requested us to write uh, dealt with a potential conflict of interest. He has said he does not have one. Uh, I think he can come and explain that to you in person. I think that's a good thing for him to do. It's also a good thing to get it out in public so that we know exactly what his thoughts are and exactly where they're going with the, the City of Portsmouth is going um, in their relationship with Coakley and the relationship in getting Coakley corrected. Specifically, when, when he declares there is no conflict of interest, uh, he, he says on page one, is my role on the committee to advance the interests of the city of Portsmouth in performing the work of the Coakley Landfill Group? That's what he said. Um, comments, please. Well, that supposedly is his, is his goal. <laughs> and he says so in writing, so, you know, I don't know to the contrary. However, uh, I think you should have him come in and explain it and thoroughly explain it. So there's no question about the fact that he is or is not in a conflict of interest. Uh, yeah, Attorney Sullivan can say whatever he wants uh, or opine however he wants to be. It's, uh, sure. it's, it's as clear as the nose on my face. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, if, if the, uh, the board and, and you would agree, I'd be interested in not just perhaps meeting with the Board of Selectmen, but perhaps uh, uh, extending it to a, a public hearing. We could have Representative Edgar, Representative Mesmer. We could have our uh, Dr. Belisero. We could have town yep. attorney. And I, I, I don't think this is the appropriate venue. I think it rises to the level of a, uh, a hearing uh, and not to be scheduled on a, um, uh, a selectman's meeting. I don't, I don't think that is the, uh, the, the venue for it. Uh, if it requires a motion, I would make one, but I leave it to you and the town manager and the town attorney. And I think sooner than later would be better. I think probably we need to hold it here so we can get it on camera. Yes. So everybody can hear it. Oh, yes. This was his intention as right. well. Yeah. To, to have a public hearing, not a selectman's meeting. Yes, sir. I, well, so it makes things simple because it's just one item. I'll second that motion. You got a motion? You just did you one. make a motion? Yes, yes, yes sir. He did. Motion, seconded, in favor. All right, so it'll be a public hearing. Can you schedule that? Or yes, sir. You might well. Somebody take care of that? Yep. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No. I have a question. Sir. Uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but if Jose were to come, we have plans. DPW has plans just so that everybody knows and can feel confident that if we were to hit, get hit with a major storm, we have plans to deal with it. We have emergency we do. plans. There are emergency plans. Uh, the, uh, the state and the town have worked together on those plans. Uh, we do expect to see sea rise, and we'll be putting out a warning notice probably tomorrow. Uh, because we're going to have at least four high tides during this period of time. Uh, they're talking about heavy sea rise and, and, and heavy heavy uh, rip currents and, and heavy wave action. So, uh, And it is coming in from the east, so it's going to come in through the opening of Hampton Harbor. It's going to drive more water in. We need to be prepared for that, and we'll be putting out a notice probably tomorrow morning uh, advising people to in low-lying areas to prepare to either evacuate or to uh, move their vehicles to some other place where they're safe and to move themselves to some other place where it's safe. Okay. Now, how do those warnings go out? Through email and telephone. Email and telephone. Right. And do people have to be have requested that emergency telephone? Yes, that's correct. Right. And how do they request that emergency They telephone? call the Department of Public Works <coughs> and ask to get on the emergency telephone list for, for flooding. Okay. And that is on our website? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. So anybody that's, that's interested can go to the website Find the number for DPW, call DPW, and put on the emergency the emergency list for emergency telephone list call or email call. And you get an, an automated telephone call on what emergencies are coming up. And I would, I would advise everybody to do that. Oh, yes. It's very important. Right. And the other thing on your report that I would advise everybody is Academy Avenue, oh, yes. school hours. I went by there yesterday, and the principal is out there trying to direct traffic away from the academy, people trying to turn down Academy Avenue. Yeah. I mean, it's a very 
easy concept. They're building the schools. Stay out of the, uh, stay off the road right now. There are many other ways you can go. Thank you. Anybody else? Any? Why don't they just close it to local traffic? The people that live there. We can do that. The board would like me to do that. I can do that. Well, you, you specifically you. voted not to do that. I, I, myself, I would think particularly during school hours. Yes, I agree. It should be that way. That's where all the problems are occurring. So yeah, we'd be happy to close to that just that. above the library so the library would not be affected and at the top of the street so the school would not be affected. And if the board agrees with that, we'll have it closed. Should we check with the school first to we see if they talk to them? See if they want us to do that. See yeah. if they want us to do that? I mean, we could take a vote to say that we're in favor of it. And if the school were to, to request it, we'd do it? The only thing I can see that's going to be a problem is parents bringing their students to school because there is a drop-off spot on Academy Avenue for vehicles to pull off with students in it to drop the students off. Okay. Why, why don't we have, why don't we check with the school first? And, and the police chief. Tomorrow morning. The police chief. Chief, chief place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Super. Old business. Regina? I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Rick? Phil? Negative, sir. Mr. Steve. Yes, yeah, we have, uh, we had the, we, we got our response from, well, it used to be Dread, now it's whatever it's called, yeah. uh, to your letter. Yes. So does that, uh, we had a motion last week to follow that further if we didn't. That's correct. Do you want me to follow up further? Because we did get a response. We have had a response now. You know, I think now is our time that we have a response from them. A few of us here have been in the House representatives, a few of us in the past. You know, um, it, it's time that the House, our representatives here started, you know, the dread can only go so far. Yeah. They can only do what the House representatives tells them to do. And I think this is, this is above them. I really, I think the, the, what we're talking about, and I'm, don't get me wrong, I am totally for us pursuing the state, but it's not anymore a dread problem. It's not a... Uh, it's a legislative problem. It's a legislative problem. I, 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 dis I disagree wholeheartedly. Well, so, and I'll, 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 when you yield the floor, I'll no, get on. No, that's fine. I just think that uh, we, can, we can push our legislatures towards it. We can, we can uh, request them. We can get our senator in here. And I think maybe now is the time that we did that. But I think, uh, you know, they, they've given us an answer. They can't do it. They're, they're, they're following their legislative rules. And I think that now, now it's time that we, we get our legislators involved in it. And it's going to be a tough uphill battle up there. And I think, but I think that's where it is. I think we, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they got back to us with their, with their, their response. And I think now we need to go after our legislators and go after the, the state in general. We don't need to be hand-picking departments that something that's out of their control anyways. May I, Mr. Chairman? Uh, let me do this. Let me go to you last. Regina? I want to say something about that. I agree. Our, re our representatives are supposed to be our voice, I agree with. But this has gone on and on and on. And, I mean, we just keep giving them you know, benefiting the state as a whole. Like I said in a letter that I wrote, which I'm planning on revising and sending out another version of it, to all our state legislators, all our U.S. senators, all our state senators. And, but what's going to, who's going to be held accountable? Because the legislators seem like they, you know, we get the commissioners to deal with because they're appointed. All right, so on one hand, I agree with Rusty. I think that it should be more of the elected officials taking over and proving what Hampton does for the state, what it contributes to the state. And the response we got back from the whatever that department is called now, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, was a little bit disappointing. And I see and I do see how it might be out of that department's hands. But that doesn't mean that I think that we should completely give up on what we're trying to do. And what we're trying to do is prove what this town does annually for the state of New Hampshire as a whole. So. Mr. Griffin? Yeah, I feel that one of the problems here, it could affect the, it could be, a, be, be affect the town also. I mean, we're talking about something that was done in 1933, and yet uh, 
that is what 67 you know 85 years ago 84 <laughs> years ago and yet the people that live on the east side of Ocean Boulevard just tonight I when I came returned to Hampton from being in Boston for the day I came down and I just looked at the sidewalks they're unbelievable the sidewalks that if you want to look at them near um, uh, from that Stacy Janes to where the beach starts they're completely uh, just flattened there's no curbs or anything over and over again all these new condos and that that have gone in there nobody can get an answer either from the state or from the town and um, yet we continuously have to um, you know pay our taxes and if you go down to at the corner of Winnicunit Road where the Ocean Club is there I was looking at there it's again it's completely flush there are no curbs. Uh, they talk about in, in in the letter that Jeffrey Rose wrote about you know maintaining the highway. Well, the highway, the sidewalks, those are key things that should be. We're just getting pushed back and forth, back and forth. Nobody gets any answers. Nobody at the planning board knows what to do. Nobody at the uh, uh, zoning board of appeals really knows what to do. And I've sat on all these boards and I've watched it over and over again. There needs to be an answer. Whether it is something that we're happy to hear, uh, it needs to be defined because we need to know who is going to do what needs to be done on the east side of the street. Uh, a lot of money was spent on the other side of the street. Now he's saying, well, we've, we've, we're paying for the trash and we're doing this and we're doing that. Yeah because there have, they have tried to uh, give a little, take a little, give a little, take a little, but this needs to be clear and cut and dry. Who is responsible for the east side of the street? It's ridiculous. And the east side of the street, everybody, you know, I don't want to make, uh, speak poorly of people that own those buildings on the east side of the street, but many, the state I've seen them refer to that they think that nothing's being done by the owners of those buildings nothing's being done because no one knows who who's in charge of what and what who where do you get the permission you cannot get the permission from the state to do anything that and then you cannot get permission from the town to do anything so these things have to be decided we just can't sit here and say okay we're all you know, 1933, that was the big depression, and we're still being depressed by everything that happened in 1933. I think it's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there was a vote at our last meeting. Uh, it was five to one to execute. Uh, I have served in other townships. Four to one. Four to one. Uh, and uh, I, w I would hope we're not in the position because a bureaucrat uh, in Concord. Uh, corresponds with us two days after we make a motion to pursue legal action and sends out a letter uh, and uh, there are other frost calls to the uh, Concord to inform uh, certain uh, elected officials that it was coming so nobody was blindsided on this uh, I would hope that this board when they uh, are votes of four to one uh, three to one three to two whatever they are that the following week we don't start coming back in here and having change of heart uh, and start rescinding motions that carry. Uh, and I would say, especially when uh, our staff, led by Mr. Welch, led by Mr. Gerald, under the chairman's leadership, with the finest uh, finance director in the state, with our department heads, and we're talking $700,000. $700,000. If we're going to offer supplications and become sycophants, and yield on bended knee in front of our citizens and our taxpayers to bureaucrats in Concord over $700,000. Uh, and if we are going to uh, ascribe to the notion that what has never been done before in Concord uh, is to uh, advance Hampton's interest. And I know personally, with the legislation that I've put forth up there that didn't make it out of committee, I know the people in this very town that are former legislators that have attacked me for absurd ideas. Uh, if they are happy to let those $700,000 of taxpayer money go through, then so be it. 
But if that is the will of the board is to reverse uh, decisions that have been made and that have been brought on through five and a half years of, of real hard work and intelligent work and accounting and finance and depreciation, then don't expect anybody to ask for one cent more as we go forward in this budget. Don't ask for a pay raise. Don't ask for any capital expenditures. Don't ask for any pay raises for people, union negotiations. Ask for nothing, because if we're going to not fight for $700,000, then this budget's going to be flat, and it'll be flat in my watch. And I would say this, again, when we sit here, and all of us have our issues that we, we spend dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of hours on, uh, if we're going to start um, rolling back these votes and re-adjudicating and going back against data for $0.7 million, and may I remind you, Mr. Chairman, that the state of New Hampshire, with its revenue camp in this very town, 03842, with tolls, liquor stores, insurance premium tax, real estate transfer tax, rooms and meals tax, court fines, the meters at the beach, it's a $200 million haul. $200 million haul. And finally, if you think there's a chance of advocating our position going forward, there was an advisory council for the parks recreation that has just been set up. I was appointed to that commission by virtue of procedure, parliamentary procedure. The senior legislator uh, that is noticed in those appointments is to call the first meeting. The first report is due out in November. It's soon to be October. I have sent an email upon immediate appointment to that committee, and I haven't heard a word back. Further, there's a representative from Hill, I believe, uh, New Hampshire, that has no, no skin in the game. There's a representative that chairs the committee that is from Merrimack that has no skin in the game. And there's a representative from Middleton, New Hampshire. And uh, I was a resident of Milton Mills, Jim, uh, for 10 years, that small little town. They had no skin in the game, no hearings. Uh, and I would say that uh, uh, whatever the efforts of past legislators were, uh, they didn't do anything. They got no money and they got no gain. And we went through this thing last year in terms of the operational conditions down there. The operational conditions in May, how bad it looked. But uh, again, anybody that thinks that you're going to advance our interest uh, in, in the legislature up there, the way the appointments of these, these committees have gone, the way that the track record has gone, and from representatives and legislators in this town, show me the money. But there's no way in heck that I'm walking away. Uh, nobody, nobody checked my name on a ballot to walk away from $700,000 because a bureaucrat writes a letter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I want to just, just, just a point. I just want to make a point that for my. For my practical point of view, if somebody were to make a motion to revisit that vote that was taken last week, that's legitimate, right? Yeah, the board can do that anytime they want. Okay, I just want to make that point. Go ahead, Rusty. Well, and I'm not saying I don't disagree with Mr. Bean on a lot of his points. However, we have one of our big points of that was we needed to hear from Dredd or whatever it's called now. We, we, ha we have heard from them. As far as the other points go, those have nothing to do with dread, and that's that's my main concern. Is well, that we make sure it's, well, well, it's, it's, it's not had, it's not it, he's got the floor. it's it's he not dread, the floor. it's not dread anymore. Let's it's address pain. it by the the, the uh, okay, correct I'll name. It's not it. dread. Let's get accurate. You had the floor. Let him keep the floor. You're, you're Thank big you. on accurate. Thank you. Natural okay, and cultural so it resources. Is the natural and cultural resources. Uh, the Department <laughs> of Natural and Cultural Resources. That we've heard from them. We got our answer from them. May not be the answer we like, but we got an answer from them. The rest of it, when it comes to rooms and meals tax and liquor tax and tolls and uh, property tax, that has nothing to do with New Hampshire Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. There is some concerns there, and I don't disagree with that. However, when the article came out in the paper, which we have no way of printing what some reporters like to fantasize with about us suing the state. There was never any mention here yesterday, last week, of suing. 
We wanted to find out and get more information. My only thing, my only answer was, we got the answer from the New Hampshire Department of Cultural Resources. We got that answer. It may not be the answer we like, but we did get the answer. As far as the rest of it goes, we can still go after that stuff. But I, I just taken what was written in the paper, which I didn't think was quite factual, and I, I took offense to it. I think we can still go after that stuff, but it's going to take our legislators to do that. We can give them as much information as we can, but you're going to have a hard fight going against road, to road tax, rooms and meals tax, and everything else. We've come a long way. It's still a long way to go, and I still think we need to go after that. May I, Mr. Chairman, Ma real Ma quickly? Ma yeah. Excuse me. I, I Ma excuse me, Regina. All right. I'm not rescinding anything I did last week, okay? Good. I'm going to tell that right now. But $0.7 million is a lot of money, all right? And then when you add, and I agree, I agree with Rusty because we got an answer, whatever it was, two days, three days later. Wasn't the answer we want, right? But we got it, and we got it in writing. So we use that. We use that. We use what I've been working on that I'm working on updating. And we continue with the legislators, not just the state legislators, but the D.C. legislators. Because look it, you got Hampton. You got, what, $200 million, let's say, we gave them last year? Well, what are we going to give them when we don't have a wastewater treatment plant? when we don't have wastewater pipes taking the crap from the beach, all right? When we don't have, um, what else do we need, Mr. Uh, Talmadge, I can't think of right now? We got a dozen things that we can All right, when stuff. we don't have water that we can drink, all right? When that becomes a problem where we have water that is so bad it eventually could lead into the ocean where people don't want to swim. All right, so all this is to me one big thing that we got to put in writing and we got to use our state legislators we got to use Mr. Bean we got to use Mike Edgar we got to use them all we got to get them and we got to get the US senators to start listening to us especially the ones that were governors here and have lived here Hampton needs help you have taken hundreds of millions of dollars from this town for as far back as I can see and I'm looking to get some updated information hopefully whatever this department is called is going to come up with a 16 financial soon and put that together and here's our response from one department we haven't gotten a response from anyone else I haven't gotten a response from any of my representatives as a taxpayer never mind um, I sit on the board of selectmen of the town that gives you the money so I say we continue the fight whether or not we sue is a completely different story there's plenty of ways to go about this and let me let me just ask for clarification. I, 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 I understand Rick wants to speak and Ms. Bean wants to speak, and I'm, I'll go to you. Let me just ask for clarification. The vote last week was to was to authorize uh, town council to initiate a declaratory judgment action in the state courts in the state of New Hampshire to, to, to obtain an adjudication of any and all aspects <coughs> that are in dispute right. as to responsibility. So it was to to take. A legal action. A legal action. Authorized, yes. Okay, I just want to clarify that. That was the vote, yeah. and it was a four to one vote. Yeah. Just clarify that. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, and myself, I don't care if it does take a lawsuit. I All I care about is that there is some answer to who is in charge of what, particularly when it comes to the road. As I've been sitting here tonight, I always review my papers. And I've been reading the results of the planning board draft minutes from September 6, 2017. And um, there's an, uh, there was someone that appeared from 571 Ocean Boulevard um, about part of it has to do with a, a one foot by one foot retaining wall around a detached garage. Uh, and the people mentioned that the property, they've owned it since 1945. This particular barn that had that retaining wall has been there since 1878, which is about 10 years longer than what my property's been there. Uh, 
And their big problem is that the water drains off the road into their yard right, and fills up. This barn has been used for years. Now, all of a sudden, it fills up with water. Yep. Just like my front door, water rolls in off the street right underneath the road. This didn't happen 10 years ago. It happens now. It has nothing to do with global warming. It has to do with the fact that the street is elevated so much that the water doesn't go anywhere where it's supposed to. There's got to be people up and down, particularly in the beach part of the area. The, the, the water has to drain right into those stores that people get some cotton candy and yes. some candy apples yep. and all that other stuff. And uh, with all of what's going on today, with people talking about global warming, talking about the marshes and this and that, we need some responsibility from the state of what they're going to do with their road. This year, I just got my new tax uh, uh, my new flood insurance bill uh, just this week. Make sure you pay that corn problem. Yeah, and it has gone from when I used to just pay $300. Last year it was 4100 This year it has just been raised to 5100 and next year it's going to be 6200 This is ridiculous, and I have never had water except for the one time in the storm of 78. The water is draining off the road, so we need to know. Who's going to take care of these sidewalks? Who's going to take care of those drains? That those drains in this, uh, uh, the minutes of this meeting, they question DOT. In, there's a representative from DOT that was there, and they ask if the drain is working in front of this place. In this place, the drain supposedly is working. My guess is it probably doesn't, but they say it does. So they're in charge of these drains. They're in charge of this road. We just can't be told by the town that they can't, you know, I've listened to that for 20... By the state? Yeah, by both sides. Okay. We get, the people that are living there are getting nothing and not an answer. All we need is an answer. If they tell me an answer I don't want to hear, I'm okay with it. But I want to understand that that answer is the right one and that we're all getting what we're supposed to get. Okay. Mr. Bean. Yeah, I would say this, Mr. Chairman, is there's... Uh, three uh, constitutional cabinets of govern and in this state and in this country. There's the executive, which would be our, our governor. There's the legislative, which would be a body that I serve in, that both you and Rusty have served in. And oftentimes when laws are made, when governments at the executive and the legislative do things, uh, the citizenry, the, the sister corporations, if you will, the town of Hampton, this incorporation that you sit in front of, Mr. Chairman, uh, are aggrieved. And uh, the process is broken. And it's a bureaucrat, and he's a bureaucrat. And check out, and it's nothing personal. And I've called for his resignation, I think, operationally. And I think in terms of the response and how we're treated and what we hear, he's unqualified for the job, period. I've said that publicly. But now we get into the issue where this same bureaucrat writes a letter. Now he's the judge and he's the executive. It's like the gentleman from the EPA and this is nothing personal. Jim was just in here. He has no answers. He doesn't have a timetable. They talk. The water's polluted. Bedford's losing $166,000. He didn't even know about it. He's the EPA. And you listen to these people and people are dying. Served at Camp Lejeune. My family drank the water. My brother's family drank the water. Go to that website. Look at the Camp Lejeune water fiasco. Read those diseases. Sleep with one eye open. Incur that, that data theft that Department of Defense, you serve your country. Equifax happens last week and everyone's a victim. It happens to the Department of Defense. It's like rifle packing a hard time. These are government people. These are diseases. These are people that aren't held to, the, to the, the standards that Mr. Welch is, that Mr. Gerald is, that Mr. Sullivan is, that our town department heads are, that our employees are. Real results, real results, real answers. They've come out on the pollution control exemption up there in Concord, Mr. Bridal. Cost this town millions and millions of dollars. I put in the legislation. It didn't make it out of committee. Democrats and Republicans wouldn't go against it. You raise this issue, I'll speak to it. Put in six or seven pieces of legislation. Didn't make it out of committee. 
I heard from one Democrat, he says, I can't do that. Frank Pierce is in my district. I said, well, I'll tell him. Charge 60,000 bucks a year for a kid to go to school. You're not getting a pollution control exemption to obey the law. We know where we've ended up with the San Susi tort. This is game on. This is revenue. This is what leadership is about. Point seven million dollars. And Mr. Rose and his, his bureaucratic career is not empowered in the state constitution to say that Regina Barnes in her residency, Mr. Bridal, Mr. Waddell, Mr. Griffin, Mr. Bean have no recourse because two days after we authorized a tort action, he produces a four-page letter that I won't bother to read. And when they come against us and we're in committee up there, Mr. Bridal, about the pollution control exemption, and go ask our people at the government affairs liaison that we have up there, uh, Jim and I have been up there, they don't even give you the courtesy call that they're going to oppose you. They send in a lawyer, and he reads, and Next Terra keeps the $2 million, Frank Pierce keeps the money. They don't talk to you. They don't care about you. You can say it's going to work, but they run it, them and the lobbyists. And it doesn't happen. And go look at my legislation. None of it made it out of committee. Republicans and Democrats, right wing, left wing, right wing, left wing, didn't make it out of committee. And then on the, the, the um, pollution control exemption, Mr. Welch, is, aside from the two million, what is that on education? Tens and tens of millions. That's given away to corporations. And I would say in, in summation that when we say that Meals and Rooms has nothing to do with revenue in our expenses, it has everything to do with our expenses because those people consume water and we have to produce the water and we had to spend time here tonight. We have to manage that as effluent to go into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay? That sewer system is going to have to be taken care of someday. The 9% goes to the state, we don't get any money back. Okay? That's a cost and there's depreciation. And our depreciation on the GASB 45, Government Account and Standing Boards, is 10% a year. We have a $2 million line item that until last year, when Christy Pullian put that in, no one was keeping track of. That's a 10% hit every year. Meals and Rooms is part of it. Every single state platform is part of it. When they take our tr their trash to the, to the transfer station, it's part of it. It's all part of it. And I would, uh, I would hope there is no motion. There is a vote by the sovereign leadership in the town of Hampton last week to direct the town attorney to execute a tort action and use the United States government, the Constitution of New Hampshire, to bring relief to the people of Hampton. And it's far more than the point seven million. It's far more than that. And I would say we let sleeping dogs rise and you raise good points. And we don't want to argue with the state. We want to get along with the state. But we don't want to get along into the state where we're walking away from our duties as leaders to the tune on this specific instance of $0.7 million. And if it ever goes back and rolls back on that, I will tell you, I will not vote for one dime. I will look for a $700,000 cut because if we can walk away from $700,000 and not fight for it, then I would recommend we cut it from the budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Let me just add something just the vote was to begin legal action he was authorized to initiate a declaratory judgment action on all aspects in dispute so is that what's happening that's what that's what the board has indicated and uh, I'm, I'm uh, intend to do that okay see that's your intention oh yes okay very good very good I just want to go on record that I was the the negative vote last week against it and I, I just want to say, Mr. Bean, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. But part of that big conversation was last week that we hadn't heard anything from, hold on, the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. And I'm just <laughs> yeah. saying, unless, all I'm saying, unless, all unless, unless, yes, sir. All I'm saying is we have heard from them. This is not against just them. Now, I, I don't disagree with you. There's a lot of that stuff that we should have, and we should be getting it. But the way it was produced in the paper, it made it appear that we were going after them in particularly. 
I, I, didn't, I didn't read the article, and I, and I know what goes on here. It's a tort issue, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's basic government 101. And unless uh, the director for cultural and natural history, or whatever they're calling that department today, uh, had a $700,000 check attached to his letter, uh, there's a motion. This will take some research. It's been neglected since 1933. And I, I do not disagree with that. But it is all departments of this state. I agree with Mr. Mr. Griffin. DOT has to come up with some responsibility of yep. what we need to do with with uh, the the sewer and drain or the drainage on, on there. They need to come up with that. We need to have some answers from them. We also need to hear from. We we've had many times the rooms and meals tax. That's a way to address it. But that has nothing to do with not dread, but Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. Uh, okay. Well, alcohol. The tax on alcohol, the tax on the road tax, doesn't have anything to do with this. And that's oh, my my purpose okay, for bringing this up tonight. What I'm going to ask for is we took a vote last week. It was 4-1. There's a directive given. If somebody has a motion they want to bring up now, that's up to the individual to do that. If there's no motion taken up, I think we can we'll discuss on. this and move on. If, that's fine. We'd just like to say one more thing. These, uh, this, by the way, at 571 Ocean Boulevard, the, uh, the all six elected people that are on, were at the planning board that night voted to support these people. And uh, so Royal Sands. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, the Spanos family property. It's like next to the. It's it's in between where you used to live Royal and Sands. Little Jacks yeah. in that right. area. One of the ones that has an old barn there. Um, but, you know, all they were trying to do was raise their existing driveway to prevent the stormwater runoff. So there are places over and over again that have this problem. And one of the things, uh, the, the study that we're doing at the Hampton Beach Area Commission um, is this particular area and a lot more has been left out of the plans that they're planning, have been left out of the 10-year plan. Um, and that's why on the, I believe it's the 16th, I, unless something is more pressing here, I plan to be at that 7 o'clock meeting because it's also a Monday night. And uh, that's something that the Hampton Area Commission pretty much always goes to. So I'm the representative there. And I plan to go there and uh, talk as, at least for myself and be supportive of to whatever else the commission is doing okay. there. So I just want clarification. We, there was a 401 vote. There has been a, a directive to you, and you're following through on that directive. That's, that's the authorization. And I think, uh, as Selectman Griffin asked me last week, does this cover all areas like the one he's just mentioned? The answer is yes. These are things that have festered okay. for years and years. Yeah, that's what I want to make sure because covering in many areas. And is there some way mediation could be done here? I mean, is there such a thing as mediation between the town and the state? The vote was, I just want to make clarification. If we're going to take votes and we're going to stick to votes, we want to know exactly what we're doing. The vote was to do, to take court action, true? Yes. And does that and I, the mediation? vote was not to go to mediation. The vote, right. and, and, I, and I would say this, Mr. Chairman, and, and pardon me, Mr. Gerald, is that uh, when, when we have these votes, they're serious issues. This is a serious amount of money. It is unrequited response. It is negligent in terms of its delay. Uh, the pattern of abuse is perennial. I consider this a, a, a legal issue. Mark Gerald is the attorney. We can talk in general specifics, 700,000, the philosophy. He is the attorney, and more comment is now a legal issue. He will take time to research it. He has other important taskings. But he has been ordered as an employee through the town manager to execute this tour. And it's exciting, and it's nothing personal. And if I was a judge, I'd want to hear this, because it is interesting, and it's historical, and it's a business relationship, and it will be adjudicated. And, and it will be very, very exciting and very interesting to see what happens. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. And, and just the answer to Mr. Griffin's question is yes, as part of litigation that's commenced in the state court system, there is a mediation process that can yeah. be. Yeah. So we don't have to be hard nosed. We can talk about it. Oh, yeah. Okay, as long as I just so want to clear what, we, what the motion was. Well, that's it's up to the judge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right.